Hey guys, Danny from Belfield Music here. We've had a bunch of requests on how we're doing our recordings. Um, we do live install performances, uh, we do product reviews, we do demos, equipment demos, um, and they're all really easy to record. Um, oft we're often using iPhones and things for the videos. We have GoPros as well, but the audio, we, we, we run really simply. We run it into Ableton Live, so I thought I'd do a bit of a rundown on how quick and easy it is to record using Ableton. Um, here it is at the bottom of our screen. Um, Ableton Live is a recording program which is really easy to use. It's got a two. It's got two basic sort of functions, which is recording and layering tracks, and it's also live performance and controlling uh, MIDI instruments, loops, samples, sounds, controllers, all that sort of thing. Um, I'm just going to quickly talk about recording audio, so I'm going to get rid of these two MIDI channels here. There's two main screens. Um, this one here is sort of, I think of as the mixer screen. Here in a row down are my different channels or different instruments. You can see there's a MIDI channel, a MIDI channel, audio and audio. These are one, two, three, four, they're nicely numbered and color coded so you can tell them apart. Um, MIDI is like software instruments, so if I was using a MIDI keyboard or controller and I wanted to, to pick a software instrument from over here and then uh, program it in note for note what I was playing. I do that often with drums and things or layer with strings. We'll look at that another time. For now I'm just going to get rid of him and him so it's a little less cluttered here. Down here I have one, two audio channels. They're for recording instruments like my guitars, basses, voices, anything that just sends a audio wave. This one here I'm going to use, I'm going to call him my guitar. And this one here, I'm going to call my bass. That should be enough. Uh, now, the first thing I always do, that reminds me, the first thing I always do is go up to live preferences and just check where my ins and outs are going. Um, audio input is where's my sound coming from. Usually, it'll probably be default set to the built in microphone, but I've set it to the Scarlett 2i2, which is my audio interface. Um, interface is something you need to record audio signals, audio instruments. Um, it basically takes audio like a wave file, uh, like a wave from, from a guitar, from a bass, from a microphone, and converts it into digital, into data that a recording program can read. Um, over here is output. Where's the sound going from the computer? Is it going to the built-in speakers? Is it going to the Scarlett 2i2? I'm just using the built-in speakers right now because being lazy, um, Hopefully that means that it'll be picked up by the microphone. We'll see how that goes. Um, now let's quickly look at each channel. At the top is the name. Um, down here are a bunch of things called clip slots or loop slots. This is where you can put in an audio clip or a loop and have it just playing around in a circle. Um, we'll look at how to use this for live performance in another video and kind of break down a bunch of the functions. Um, down here is how to stop the loops. Uh, down here is where is your audio from. At the moment it's coming from our external input which is our Scarlett. Scarlett's got two channels. It's got a left channel and a right channel. One channel, one channel, two. Um, I've got my bass plugged into one. Uh, I've got my guitar plugged into one, so I'm selecting one. I've got my bass plugged into two, so I've selected two. There's also one, two. If you want to run both channels in stereo, uh, some things like digital pianos, electric drum kits, uh, even some guitars and things. Sometimes they put out a stereo signal, so they have a left channel and a right channel, and you might want to link them together into one recording. You can. I'm not going to, though. Uh, underneath is monitoring, which is what am I listening to. At the moment, these are turned off, which means that you can't hear anything through the speakers. I could turn these in, so the monitor is listening to, th is listening to whatever is coming into these channels. So if I play my guitar, you can hear it if I touch the bass. There it is. Um, of course, this is going to be confusing to listen to. Like, if I'm trying to make a recording, I'll be hearing these guitars just sitting there. So I'm going to turn these onto auto, which means that when they're armed, we can record with them. When, when, when they're set to record, you can hear it. And when you don't want to hear it, they turn the instruments off. When, when you're not recording, it turns off the instrument. Nice and simple. Uh, audio 2, where is the audio going to? We're just going to set it to master. You can do things with setting it to effects channels and then sending it back and uh, bussing things. We're, we're going to talk more about that as we go on, but for now, this is the basics done. Um, so the, our audio 
from this channel is going to the master channel, which is over here. Um, over here on the right, it has, um, let's see, sends, do you want to post and, oh, you know what, again, let's not talk about that. Down here is their master volume, that's gonna be pretty useful. Um, back on our, our guitar channel, don't get, don't get distracted, Dan. Uh, sends, again, uh, for effects. Over here we have this big slidey bar is the volume for that channel, how loud is my guitar. I'm gonna have it set to here, which is sort of the neutral, the normal. Um, this weird little circle thing is panning. Um, goes from, do I want it coming out the left speaker? Do I want it coming out the right speaker? Do I want it mostly right speaker, but a little bit of left? Or do I want it dead set in the middle so it comes evenly out of both? Um, here is the track activator. These guys, if you've got 15 channels or something, you might have, I wanna hear which, you, you will only hear the ones that are lit up. So if you do have a bunch, uh, let's just quickly make a bunch more. You might say, I wanna to listen to these channels and not that channel, not that channel. So now I'm hearing those three. Um, and you can use it as sort of, in the recording process, you don't always wanna hear everything. You might wanna pay attention to certain things. That, that makes sense. Let me get rid of a bunch of those tracks. That's doesn't seem useful to have these all here. Let's get rid of them all. Um, underneath is an S, and that stands for solo. So if you're kind of listening back and you just quickly want to hear only that person, then that gets rid of them all. But it also saves how they were activated before, so you can kind of turn that off. Then when you turn them back on, maybe you'll still be listening to two out of four, or these three, or something. Underneath is a red circle, and that guy there is your record on, on this track for recording. Uh, that's the button you push if you like. I want to record onto this channel. Um, over here, again, same things, but master volume, master panning, master soloing. There's my headphone volume level. Um, these aren't too important right now. Uh, over on the left, we have our software section. This is where all your audio effects, your virtual software instruments, your plugins from, which is software from other companies. Um, where you might keep your samples and your loops and all the little bits and pieces. Um, down here in the bottom left corner is the help box and this guy actively updates with whatever my mouse is over. It gives me, tells me what it is. So when I'm over here it says, oh it's the track title. Yeah it sure is. Down here it says, oh it's the clip slots and it tells you a bit about the clip slots. Um, when I'm up here it says, oh that's the loop switch. You press that and you can start, you can loop a section. Um, Let's quickly look across the top as well. Uh, link, you can use this to show how many devices are linked together. Um, if you're using a bunch of, if you're playing live DJ sets or you've got a bunch of keyboards and, and uh, controllers, this is a really useful thing. Um, over here is your, your tempo. So at the moment we're going 120 beats per minute or two beats every second. I'm gonna s slow it down about 115 maybe. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Tap is like, if you don't quite know what number you're trying to play at, but I wanna play about this fast, tick, 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 tick. You can see it's kind of going at, it's apparently, I did wanna play it basically 115 anyway, whatever. Um, over here we've got nudge the tempo, you can kind of just bring it down just a little bit and bring it back up just a little bit. If you're trying to synchronize, if people are playing live and you wanna find what tempo they're at, you can kind of just give it a bump, oh, it doesn't feel right, bump it, nudge it a little more. Oh, look, it says that, it says it right down there. Ha. Um, over here, are, am I playing a song in four beats of the bar? Am I playing a song in seven beats of the bar? Over here, these double dots are my metronome. Um, when I'm recording, I really like playing a metronome because I'm, well, sometimes I'm loose, not always. Um, I'm pressing a little arrow and I can have a count in of a bar so I can have time to get ready. Um, over here, quantize. Well, that's gonna be pretty useful when we, when we talk at MIDI. Quantize is it sort of nudges your recording to be more in time with the other instruments. If you play a thing and it was almost right, but it wasn't quite right, you can use quantize effects to kind of fix that up. We will look into that as we go. Um, in the meantime, let's quickly press tab, which switches us to our other window, which is sort of the recording, the workstation. You can see here we've got tracks from left to right now, and this shows the whole song from left to right. Numbers across here are which bar. Um, and I can use my magnifying glass over the top to kind of zoom in and see a bar by itself or zoom out and get a view of the whole picture uh, of the whole song. Across the top here you can sort of see a little black square is showing what my view is currently of so as I, I can grab it and drag it left to right there it is I can zoom in 
uh, and it shows that I'm only looking at a smaller section. I can zoom out, oh, and it shows that I'm seeing more of the song. And in a second, it'll show that I'm seeing the whole dang song. There it is, uh, 57, 58 bars, something like that. So I'm gonna click over here at the start. I've got my track armed. I might just chuck some effects on it just because I can. Most uh, Ableton comes with a bunch of built-in effects. I've gone instruments, more MIDI. Audio effects are different types of, th um, of ways of changing your guitar sound. So by itself, it's gonna sound pretty bland. I'm gonna turn on monitoring so you can hear it. There she is. Um, if I chuck maybe uh, amplifier, guitar amp sound in front of it, that might help. That's pretty bright and bitey. Um, getting a little bit of delay, so I'm quickly gonna go back to preferences. And you know, we're at 512 samples. That's a great high quality sound. We probably don't need that much sound, not just for um, demo recording anyway. And now it's... You can probably already tell that it's much more in time than I'm playing. Um, what I did there was basically said it doesn't need to be crazy high quality because, uh, well, because it doesn't need to be for this, but that means that my computer doesn't have to spend as much time thinking, so there will less likely to be any delays in the recording process. A thing called latency is, is, is what that is, and that can be heck for musicians to play with if they record if their recording comes in a millisecond after they play the note then it's really impossible to, to record in time with other uh, instruments other musicians so I've got my got my amp sound I might chuck a reverb on as well so I get my reverb and just drag it down there and now the guitar track has an amp and a reverb on it and there we go That's as easy as it is, really. So now if I press the record button on the top, I've got play, stop, and record, of course. I'm gonna start it, yeah, I'll start it right at the beginning. Uh, I'll get my one bar count in that I chose before, and then away it goes. So I'm gonna press tick, let's see. That'll do. Play it back. While it's playing back, my instrument's been muted because that's pretty helpful. Yep, that'll do. Now, um, these effects here haven't been recorded onto the track, so if I didn't like the way they sounded, um, I could uh, I'm gonna grab that and make it longer. I'm just gonna right click on that guy and press duplicate. So now I've got that same thing going twice. I'm gonna turn off the there we go. Now, if I didn't like the amp, I could turn it off and see how it sounded without it. It's a little power button on the left. I like the amp though. There's without the reverb. Okay, that was pretty good. Um, so now I'm going to go down here and arm the bass guitar. Now that that's now that that's live. You should be able to hear the bass. And he sounds good, a little flat, so maybe I'll grab an amp again and chuck him onto that channel. That sounds all right. I'm quickly gonna just check the volume levels here. Sounds all right. Um, if this was peaking, if there was too much signal coming in, this volume meter would be changing from green to red. I can do that like this. And that's sort of the computer's way of saying, whoa, turn the volume down on your guitar, on your bass a little, otherwise, you get distortion, you lose the sound, it's gonna get all buzzy and crackly, and not necessarily in the good way that you want. Okay, let's see if I can put a, put a track down. You might put, I mean, we could spend ages putting more effects on and seeing what happens. Uh, cabinet, compression might be nice, bit of, D, bit of EQ. Let's just leave it as it is for now, and we'll go back to the start. We'll still have our one, let's, 
to leave the metronome on to keep me in time at least a little. We'll put down another track and get a one bar count in and away we go. Click. at the end. Doesn't matter. I can touch solo. Just listen to how that sounded. Might decide to put two gain. Oh, check your bass amp, silly. <laughs> Wrong note at the end is just gorgeous, but that's, that's alright. Turn off the metronome. Turn solo back off, see how it sounds. Yeah, it sounds like the guitar is a little out of tune with the bass, but that's not important for this exercise. Um, I could then change the volume of each one. I might pan the guitar a little left and the bass a little right so they feel a little more separate when you're listening to them. Um, and see. looking at the layers, I'm looking at the bass comes through a little too strong. And over here, some of the marshals just peeking a little to pull back. Bring it down. There we go. Doom, do doom, blonk. Um, now, having done that, there's, oh, geez, there's infinite sort of stuff we could do. We could do layering. We could do, uh, I could right click on this guy and duplicate the track. That's going to come up with the exact same track again. Um, I might get rid of that and then just change the inputs on him a bit so we get a different sound. Click rock, click blues, doesn't really matter. Let's try that one. Um, you can put more parts down. Maybe we'll want to hear that instead. And away you go really, you can go nuts. There's no real limits to how many layers. Um, no, no limits to how many layers. You could say, I want the exact same thing to happen 16 times. Um, you might say, no, I don't. I, I want to get rid of that. Or maybe you might zoom in and go, you know, I like this bit, but that first part here was no good. Let's get rid of that first part here. Um, maybe I didn't want that here, maybe I want it over there a bit. Oh, that guy there should really be lining up. Come on, zoom it. That's better. Almost. I could zoom in and spend time kind of lining these two things up so they sort of happen at the same time. That's kind of fun. Really. <laughs> okay. Well, that's just playing around, really. We can look at effects and things as we go. Um, how to use a bunch of effects to get a, a, a high-end sound out of it um, is sort of the a, a different lesson. From here, you would probably, of course, press save first. File, save, set. The set is sort of the project in work. So you load a set and it comes up with all these separate tracks, waves and effects, everything. Whereas pressing export is creating a WAV file or an MP3 file that's sort of the end result of what you're doing. So you would go to export and render track master. Do you want just one channel? You might just want to export track one, the guitar track, and show your mates. And they'll be like, oh, no, don't use that. Change the effects. Or you might want to, we're, we're going to uh, save the master. It's how much of it are we, are we exporting or rendering, turning into a, a WAV. So we are starting at bar two. No, let's start at bar one, beat one. And we will render the length of it is going to be, let's see, eight bars long. Eight bars. And four. I render as a loop. Do I want it to turn into a loop, sir? Oh, I don't really. I'm not going to use this one. Or your type. AIFF is high quality, but bit, uh, takes up a lot of space. WAV. I'm probably going to use WAV. 
44, we recorded in 44, so it makes sense to, to export in 44 bit depth. Um, all of this sort of stuff depends on how comp how high end you're aiming for and what sort of product you, you want to resolve and how much space you want it to take up. Um, real, you've also got an option to upload straight to SoundCloud. If you've got a SoundCloud, you can have your account linked here. It makes it really easy to kind of do live performances or to stream your time in the studio. Uh, you can also pull video straight in. Um, if I had here, hang on, haven't got anything in my finder, but Oh, I do, but I could pull a file and just from my from my from my finder and just drop it here, and it would pop up straight as another track with video attached. But we're not going to do it right now because I haven't got any good videos to, to chuck with <laughs> this magical song. Um, but then you could choose to export the audio and the video together, render them um, different ways. There's a bunch of different types, and then you press export, and away it goes. Uh, let's see what happens. Click, save it as. Awful jams. That'll be nice. Save. And theoretically, if I just jump out of live, quit. Do I want to save? I should, but I won't this time. Uh, do I want to leave all the temporary tracks and things? If I was coming back to this file, I would. Uh, I usually, as just a habit, I keep everything. But today I'm just going to delete them so I have space on the, on the computer. Get rid of this guy and... There she is, there's my Awful Jams WAV track, which we can play like this. And before you know it, we're rich and famous. Um, okay, we're gonna do a couple of series on these as we go, uh, looking at different effects, looking at uh, recording structure and composition and the, the mixing and mastering process and things. Uh, if you've got questions, send them through to us. Um, if, you, if there's something you want us to be focusing on more, m MIDI, VSTs, different, what different effects do, um, let me know. I'm always happy to kind of ramble on about something or other, but hopefully this will at least get people started. Um, I will see you for our next video real soon.